Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Mummy and I'm Man. My name is Rachel, I am a Brit who has been living in Jordan for about six years now, and I make videos about life in Jordan, so please subscribe if that interests you. And today's video is going to be about choosing a school for your children here in Jordan. <laughs> The question that I get asked from people the most is can I recommend a school for people to send their kids to I can't do that like that's that is like how long is a piece of string it's an impossible question to answer the issues are that it depends on your location on your financial situation and actually most importantly what your values are so there is a wide range of different schools here in Jordan. I always recommend to people is that they go onto Facebook and they find an expat group for Jordan or for Amman or for the city that they are moving to and they ask in there for people's recommendations, for people's experiences um, and that is a very useful group. And you can also use the comment section below if you wanna ask any questions um, and maybe local people can answer and maybe people who um, are foreign that live here maybe you can get some pointers from there as well but inshallah this video will shed some light on some things so in jordan private schools are used a lot more commonly for lower and mid-income families because the government schools just they have they don't have a lot of funding basically so private school system here is a lot more common than it is say back in the uk where it's a, it's much more about a status class thing it's very expensive whereas in jordan you've got a much bigger range of uh, tuition fees so you can go for a lower end or higher end depending on your situation so families here work really really hard to send their kids to private schools even when they don't have a lot of money um, and I think because of that, because there's so many private schools and because it's so, it's, there's such a uh, demand for them, every day you've got new private schools popping up all over the place. Um, it's much more like a business. It's run more like a business. You know, uh, you don't have head teachers here, for example. You have a school manager or you have department managers instead of heads. So minimum wage is around 270 dinars a month, which works out at about 3,240 dinars a year. And you've got some schools that are 300% more than that minimum wage per year, like 13,000 a year um, for the older grades. That's not all the schools. There are schools that are more expensive than that. And there are most schools that are cheaper than that. Um, but it gives you an idea that, you know, there are some really expensive schools here. And imagine that most households here have more than two children, so. But that's not all schools. Some schools are more expensive, most schools are cheaper. Most of my friends are sending their KG aged kids to school for around 1,000 a year, 1,500 and going up to maybe um, like 6,000 or something for the um, grade 12. I think that's the grade that you finish in. The older grades. Something that I have noticed is that there is a huge emphasis on examinations and qualifications and like hard cold results here in Jordan. So for instance, my four-year-old who is in KG1 has just finished his midterm exams, which I can't say I took very seriously. Although, you know, I know that it's probably really important that he does learn how to do exams because that is gonna be his life. But, so I have been told that this focus that's put on exams is actually due to the parents who put a lot of pressure on the teachers to show that the children are learning something to give results. But I don't know, you know, whether or not that's true. But what I've noticed is that whilst there is this this exam culture that we have, we also have a lot of schools claiming to be Montessori, which is a little bit of a, a contradiction for me. Um, but I have worked in a couple of schools and I've, I've visited lots of schools, and I have noticed that the Montessori practices aren't necessarily always being applied. So if Montessori education is something that you feel quite strongly about. Um, then I definitely recommend speaking to the school about it and making sure that they are actually applying the methods and haven't just bought some Montessori toys. So English language. Um, English language classes are now a part of the national curriculum, which means all Jordanian children should be learning um, a basic level of English. Um, and I actually, I see this correlation between the more expensive schools and the children who attend those schools tending to speak English as their first language and Arabic as their second language, even if 
their parents are Arab and they, they've lived here their whole lives and things. It's just an anecdote um, and it's not like proof or anything. I'm not speaking from facts or anything like that. But I think it's just giving an idea of how much English is pushed and how much English is valued um, to give the, give the children more, more opportunities in their lives. When it comes to us, we really want to push the Arabic because our kids have got the English at home and we're always trying to convince the teachers like we, we actually don't care about the English, like just, let's just focus on the Arabic. Something that I think is useful for foreign parents to know when they're sending their children to schools here is that, um, is that your child is learning English and Arabic, but they're learning two kinds of Arabic when they go to school. They're gonna be learning the spoken Arabic that the teachers are gonna be speaking and giving the classes in, and they're also gonna be learning the standardized Arabic, MSA, that the school books are written in. So, like with Adham, I keep thinking, he's learning three languages, like he's learning English, he's learning Arabic for Sahan, he's learning Arabic on Mia, um, and then some schools will offer a French or Spanish or Russian or whatever as well but those are elective obviously um, it doesn't change anything that they're gonna I just think that it's useful to understand that there are these two different kinds of Arabic that they're going to be coming into um, that they're going to be encountering the schools will be offering a number of different programs that the child can be enrolled in so the first one is the national program which ends with the Taujihi exams in grade 12 and the Taujihi exams are the equivalent to GCSEs and A-levels and the SATs um, and basically whatever you need to finish school with. <laughs> the same school may also offer international programs such as the British curriculum, which ends with the GCSEs and A-levels, or the American systems, um, ending with the high school diploma or SATs, and they may also offer the international baccalaureate system too. So I did mention bullying. I do think that that's something that comes up quite a lot. I hear quite a lot about bullying. Um, and I do think that it's probably worth really interrogating the school that you're interested in about how they deal with bullying, how they deal with discipline. Some schools really like go for it and really knock it on the head before it begins. Um, and some schools don't seem to have a strict policy at all. So it's worth looking into. But so far, I don't really have any real complaints. Um, I know my son is only in KG1, but I see my friends and their kids are in older grades and things, and they're getting along just fine. I have noticed that I, I'd say that the mid-range schools, like the average kind of schools that people send their kids to here, are probably about the same level of education, same level of facilities and things that you would find in state schools in the UK. Um, but, you know, obviously the, the higher up you go, the more facilities the more you pay, the more facilities and the more opportunities those schools offer. And I've got here a list of questions that I think are worth considering um, asking the schools before enrolment, such as how is bullying dealt with? How are children punished? Um, is there any room for self-expression? So the reason why I'm, I'm highlighting this question is because some schools are incredibly strict. Also, how is parent-teacher communications handled? So some schools, you speak with the, the teacher directly over WhatsApp and some schools you don't have any connection with them at all. I think that's really important. And also to ask how often homework is given out. The last thing on my list is, will my child's image be used on social media? This is something that happens here in Jordan. Um, and if you have a problem with your child's photo being taken, then you should raise that and ask them about child privacy concerns and things like that. Another thing to consider when you're looking around the school is what the environment is like. What are the people wearing? How do they treat each other? You get schools that are very, very strict, very Islamic or very Christian. Um, and you get other schools that are completely the opposite. They're very American, um, very Westernized. Um, and you have to kind of, you also, it's useful to look at the parents, the kind of parents that are going to the schools and things. There was one school that I really liked, but I was like, you know what, I can't deal with these parents for the next 15 years. Like, it's not going to work for me. Um, so it is, you do get very, very different kinds of communities and very different kinds of values, depending on which school you send your kids to. I'm sure that I haven't covered everything there in that list of questions. They were just some of the things that popped into my mind. Please feel free to leave in the comments your own questions that you would ask your potential school. So I hope that that was useful in some way. And to anyone who is looking for a school for their kids, I hope that you find it. And I hope that this video was helpful to you. And inshallah, we'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ma'asalaamih.